voice I hear falling on my ears, the Son of God is closing, and He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells You see, he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush the singing. Can I hear you sing? Can I hear you? Come on. To him. Let me hear you. It's still ringing, isn't it? Ringing out. He walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his, his own. I'm his child. And the joy we share. As we tarry, we tarry there And honor has ever, ever known And the joy we share As we tarry there None other has ever, ever known Amen. I thought you knew this song. Hmm? I thought you knew this song. Okay, someone on that piano before you play. On the piano, you know the song, isn't it? Okay, we go together. He speaks and the sound of his voice. Let me hear you. Tis so sweet. Secret tears I cried 
Then one day someone told me of, of your mercy. Come on. And the love you shone the day on Calvary there, there you died and purchased my, my redemption. When you broke sin's power and set my spirit free, I'm amazed that you love me. Thank you, Lord. I'm amazed how you care through your precious blood. I find but I and all my sins are washed away. They all gone through your blood. And all my sins are washed away. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? Yes, it's true. There have been days that I've failed you. See, Lord, you know the many times I've gone astray, but I, I have loved. Your love is stronger than my weakness, and your ear, your ear is open every time I pray. No one else could ever care for me like you, Lord. How the friends could never be, could never be as close, as close to me. And I am not afraid to face the problems of tomorrow. Knowing you are everything, everything I ever, ever need, Lord. I'm amazed. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, that you love me. I am amazed how you have cared for me, Lord. Through your precious blood, I find pardon. Music is off. And all my sins are all washed away. Oh God, do your precious blood. Thank you, Jesus, and all my sins are washed away. I'm amazed that you love me. Thank you, Lord, I am amazed for your love, Lord, that you care. And all my sins are all washed away They all gone through your precious blood, Lord And all my sins are all washed away I'm amazed that you love me Thank you, Lord, I am amazed That you care how you have cared for me Hey, I stretch your blood and I find pardon. And oh, all my sins are all washed away. Thank you for your blood. All my sins are washed away. And oh, all my sins are washed away. Thank you for that cross, Lord. All my sins are washed away. Thank you for shedding your blood for me, Lord. All my sins are washed away. Praise God. I'm just requesting all those who are outside, please get into the church. We want to start our programs. 
if you're outside there and you can hear this voice, make sure you get in. All the teachers, those who are marking the assignment, please also come in. We want to give out the results. And all the children who are outside, please ensure that you're outside. Please, ah, sorry, please ensure that you get inside. So the deacons, you can assist me to uh, get people inside who are out so that we can be able to start our program. Can I have a chorister to give us an item? Choristers. Give us an item as we are ushering the rest of the team inside. Good afternoon. We shall do song number 195, Showers of Blessing. Showers of blessing. Gracious Lord of heaven, thank you for this opportunity that you have given us again 
to listen to your messages, to worship together, to fellowship together. We invite your holy presence to be with us. Lead us, Lord, and help us to be attentive. Even our, as our facilitators, take us through, be with them, God. May, use, may you use them as the vessels to deliver your message. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to welcome our guests so that they can take us through this afternoon session. So, Dr. Karibu. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Happy Sabbath this afternoon. Uh, we are about to come to the end of our day, but we don't want to dis disappoint the children. Uh, we don't dis want to disappoint the children, so I'll ask the teachers to come as and uh, let us know. Teacher Irene. Teacher Irene. Is Teacher Irene here? Okay, at least I can see one teacher. Let's first, eh? Brother Rokenya. Children, you better go and look for teacher Irene. Uh, Brother Rokenya. Eh? Oh, there's teacher Irene. Teacher Irene will give us the marks. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Tell us who. Good afternoon. Uh, the candidates who participated in my in the age bracket between six to eight were sixteen in total. Out of the sixteen, uh, all of them obeyed the instructions of putting their name, the school in which they are, uh, their age, and the Sabbath school in which they are. Out of the sixteen. I had two candidates who copied from each other, and so we dis I disqualified them. But the work was equally very good. All of them have earned good work, and I believe after this I'll return back the papers to the owners. Out of which, we had the excellent number one student being Nicholas Akama. The other name is written, I'm not able to read it very well. Sere, Sereta. Nicholas Akama. Nicholas, Nicholas, very good, very good, excellent. Very good. Have, st stand there, stand there. And mm -hmm. uh, number two? Number two, we have Nouveau Mwaniki. The two candidates went through the salmon and they drew the two trees of the dates and the coconut. Uh, they also had a tree that held the fruits. And through the salmon, the speakers talked about the tsunami. Now, Nicholas brought out the tsunami where Dr. was saying that while well, tsunami sweep most of the things, the palm tree only went bent and again it bumped up. And so that's why Nicholas Akama has earned excellent and has won the prize of number one. Again, uh, he demonstrated. She's telling us, please let the parents come. Parents of these children come. Is any parent of When they both demonstrated the benefits of debts, where the speaker said that it helps the, okay, in their language, but it meant that uh, for an expectant mother, when she constantly used it, it helped to lessen the blood flow during birth. So both of them demonstrated that in their drawings and narratives. And so that's why they've earned that 
and may God bless you. Amen. 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 Uh, sorry for interruption. The owner of KBZ 466B. Please go and bring your car near. This is Dika. You have parked very far. Please go and bring your car near. KBZ 466B. Now we want to, for these children, I will do an interview for you and Dr. Mero do the other one. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, I want to be a musician. Wow. Like Israel. Good. Very good. Okay. Now. What do you want to be when you grow up? A pilot. Wow. I'll be on your plane. Okay. So we start with you and we want to pray for you. We'll ask um, one of the elders of the church to come and pray for him and somebody in women's ministry to come and pray for her. The elder. We don't have any elders here today. Okay, thank you, elder. And is anybody in the women's ministry? None at all. There's no lady in women's ministry? Okay, thank you. Pray for him and what he wants to become, and that's the mom. And then if somebody will pray for you, then you'll get your gifts from Brother Osoro, Dr. Osoro, who is the Deputy Health Ministries. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this moment and for this opportunity. We come before you, Lord. We praise your name for the gift of Nicholas. He's a wonderful, handsome young boy. We thank you for the wisdom and knowledge you have given him. We thank you even for the vision that he has of becoming a pilot in the future. We commit him before you. May he grow. May he grow in your word. May you bless him with knowledge and wisdom. May he further live to accomplish his dreams. We pray also for his parents as they are bringing him up. We pray, Lord, that may they never lack. May you always provide for them that they will be there to see their son succeed and celebrate his victory. Above all, may you help him, guide him, and may make him father to be a disciplined boy. May he be a light to the others, Father Almighty, and may he be part of those who will inherit the kingdom of God. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Together with that, our Lord and our Father who lives in heaven, we come before your presence with thanksgiving in our hearts. We want to commit this child to be before you. We thank you, Lord, because she is already a blessing to her family and to the church. I want to pray on behalf of the rest of the church for this girl, that, Lord, you may prepare her for your soon return. Make her victor, make her dare to, start, dare to stand and dare to be a Daniel in these times of the end to stand for you, to live for you, and Father, to be a light wherever she lives. This moment, Lord, I also pray that you may bless her, her future, expand her understanding, her wisdom in her career, that, Lord, you may be glorified in her life. I pray for special blessings, even for her family, that, Lord, the parents may bring her in the ways of the Lord. May her be blessed from this day until you come to take us home, this we ask in Jesus' name. Okay, and now they're about to receive their, uh, ready to receive their gift. Who is number one? Nicholas is number one, and uh, Nicholas was to receive red shilling. What to do with it? But I hope 10% uh, will go to church. Amma? Yes. yes. You know, yes. Do, you know, do you know how Amen. much is tithe for that? How much is tithe? From 200? From 200, yes. Two? Twenty shillings. Very good. Very, Very good. good. Well so done. You ask mom, 
we'll have to sh help you to see how to get tithe for next. Do you know where you put tithe usually? Where do you put tithe? Mom will show you. Mom will show you. At the end, you see that you see that elder there? There? No, where is the elder? Right here, right here. Ask him how do you give tithe? Okay. Later. Okay. There is your two hundred idea. Say thank you. And then Noella, Novella, okay. And what are you going to do with? Um, I'm going to buy maybe things for this church. Okay, you want to buy something for the church? Yes. Okay. Daddy will help you. There's your money, say thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, the next category uh, was looking at uh, the words and seeing how many times that the, this was the to eight, nine to 11. Okay. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Uh, uh, I was the teacher. Uh, <laughs> Why are we laughing? Why, why are you laughing, my brother Duke? <laughs> yes, I was the one in charge in that category, uh, age bracket uh, 9 to 11 years. And uh, I was looking uh, specifically uh, five areas one, the name, age, school, and the Sabbath school. And I can say, uh, categorically, all of them they passed in the, that very first uh, category. Very good, obedient. That good. that was so nice. Then we had um, uh, actually uh, the recording number of times the name was being mentioned by the preachers. The first name was Palm Tree. We had it and Coconut Christian. And that is what I've been doing immediately after we are done by divine uh, during the lunch hour. Uh, number one is Merisa Wailimo Melissa. in that category. Me very good. Excellent. Uh, Come with your mommy Melissa or Wailimo. your daddy. Come with your mommy or daddy. Yes. Uh, followed by Victor Moredi. Where is Victor? Victor. Where is Victor? Victor Moregi. Oh, Mugambi, sorry. Yeah, Victor Mugambi, sorry. Thanks for collection. Where is my blood? Yeah, Victor, Victor. Very good, very good. Excellent. And mommy and daddy? <laughs> sorry, I was up to go to number four, but I've been told to limit up to number two. So, thanks so much. Uh, so, we have uh, Melissa and Victor Mugambi. Uh, the appellant, the dad. Yes. Okay, so her parents uh, had dropped her and she chose to stay till the afternoon, isn't it? Very good. And her parents have gone to another place. Where, they, where have they gone? Nararia. Okay, she, they've gone to Nararia. So um, we will just pray for her and uh, pray for pray for for him but um let's see who will come and pray for let's have a volunteer come and pray for uh, from melissa and somebody to come and pray for victor adult a lady as, as they're doing so what do you want to become a teacher you want to become a teacher very good amen are you happy you came to church and you are dropped today yes so what will you tell your parents today that I learned something. Very good. Amen. So who pray for her? Huh? Our chorister today. Please come and pray for her. Anybody, anybody. Okay. And Victor, what do you want to become? We, when just, you grow up? we just want to encourage our children in this church. They belong to us. Huh? And can you imagine she was dropped? She chose to come here. And so we just need thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Okay. And Victor wants to become an architect. He wants to become an architect. Very good architect. And may you grow to be an architect for Jesus, okay? 
Yes. Amen. Okay, so our chorister will pray for one of the children and the other and elder will pray for uh, his Yamori leader. Okay. So, Victor. Let's pray. Oh, Father Divine, we thank you for this opportunity that we are here at thy feet. Thank you for the life of Victor. Father, we have learned that we are all victors and we proclaim that in your name. He has dreams of becoming an architect. We commit them into your hand. We make plans as man, but Lord, you, ma you manifest them in us. May you lead him through as he grows. May he grow in Christ. Knowing you as the only true God, I pray this, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank and you. We are praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to come before you this afternoon to praise your holy name and to thank you because you are good. Thank you because you are our Father, our Maker, and our King. You alone made us that we may be your children and live to see you the great things that you continue to perform in our life. In a special way, we want to bring before you our daughter Melissa. You've given her a chance to be in school. She's learning well. We continue to thank you for this that you've enabled her to continue to learn and to know you, dear Lord. Thank you because of her life and for the school where she goes. We thank you for the, her parents and we thank you for everything about her. She continues to learn as a young girl. We commit her into your hand that Lord her desire to be a teacher may pass to be true when she has completed her education. We commit her into your hand in a special way that you may continue to guide her in her studies to the end for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now there was a prize for you. Where is uh, Elder Osoro? Here yeah, you are. Melissa. Melissa was number one. And then Victor was number two. So Melissa gets how much? 500 Kenya shillings. Wow. What are you going to do with it? I might save and give an offering. Very good, excellent. Okay. And then you tell your mommy and daddy you actually won, eh? Okay. If there is somebody who knows Melissa's parents, somebody who can talk to them and tell them why she got the money. It would be nice. Who can do that? Who knows? Her? The elder, the, the elder who prayed. Oh, you know, you know that you have their number, so you can tell them why, huh? Okay. Excellent. Now, Victor and his daddy are here. Will much? 200 Kenya shillings. Wow. Well done. Well done. That is the seed for making you an architect. What are you going to do with it? Save it and give it as tithe and offerings. You tithe and offering, and then you do something nice for yourself. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Amen. 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 Excellent. Then we will give uh, Elder Osoro his uh, group. He will tell us about his group. And they had a, he had, I think he had a difficult time. Because this was the age group that was uh, writing the lessons that they learned and how they will apply or what they have learned. Go ahead. It's very true. I had a hard time here because I had to call other two teachers so that they may help me uh, to know who is the winner here because our, most of the kids have photographic memory and I tell you from what our doctor started talking about all through they really captured it I had 10 students who brought their papers in uh, the first one was uh, Japheth Chacha. Japheth Chacha. Japheth Chacha, excellent. Wow, good. And your parents, guardian, somebody you have come with to church? Yes, my mother. Your mother, where is she? She's coming. She's coming. Oh, good, excellent. Number two? Uh, number two was Brian Ogeto. Brian Ogeto. Excellent. Brian. Oh, this, this time this is boy power. Yeah? Okay. 
and uh, what actually they talked about while uh, they were summarizing exactly what they talked about one of the lessons that church has said that he will stay strong and he will keep on preaching the word of God till he comes again another lesson he said that he'll try to strengthen the society by bringing so many people to church and especially the Adventist church and the last thing he said Amen. he is a symbol of victory and joy to the society and so he will make sure that all the rest of the people feel at the feet of Jesus Amen okay excellent now he came with his cousin if his cousin can come up is that good yeah meanwhile we'll interview this young man tell us what is the one thing that you want to do different because you learned uh, so much this morning what are you, how are you going to apply what you learned I'm going to spread the word of God to all the corners of the world how are you going to spread the word by preaching by preaching so you want to be a preacher um, no, not no? Really. what do you want to be an engineer he wants to be an engineer but you know you can be an engineer plus a preacher uncle there is a doctor and a preacher yes yes okay excellent okay now tell us what do you want to become mm, i want to become i want to become a principal principal of the school university university watch at two university <laughs> Yeah, very good. Excellent. What is the one thing you learned very very uh, so much this today? I learned that um, we can help others by by giving them give, by sharing with them what we have and they will get blessings from God. Amen. So that we can share what we learned and help them help others because of what we have learned, isn't it? excellent so uh, and actually that's what she he said number one thing he said that uh, he will help others to become a helper amen we already have god's god servants right here I'm rachel to come and pray for for these young men and then they can get uh, what is due them well done Vice Chancellor. Amen. You see, it you starts see, here. We have uh, children with a lot of potential, but it's like we are not mentoring them very well. Even when our child says, "I want to be a vice chancellor," come on, let's see. It's like uh, we don't want to mentor them. You know, it is important for us. We have parents here who are in the university, others are engineers, others are all those, others are mathematicians like Elder Nyaga, statistics and all that kind of thing. So, I want to identify a parent I want you to talk to. Unajua Mama Bruce? Ure Mama Bruce na mwana pale? Anytime you come to church, talk to her. Panini, why would you talk to her? Why do you think you'll be talking to her? Niambie si juu ni kwambie. Don't know. Ah, you don't know. Mama Bruce teaches in Jomo Kenyatta University. And maybe that is where you'll be the vice chancellor. See, it is good to meet this child. Mama Bruce, I'm giving you a responsibility. Yes, she has said yes. So be talking to her. Let, uh, tell her, you know, about your dreams. Tell her about your vision. 
And for me, I'll just pray. You want to be an engineer? Who you to our church? I'm looking for an engineer in this congregation. Engineers. Let me see an engineer here. Victor. Victor, 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 can you look for somebody who has those ideas of telecommunication, what it is, eh? At Nani? Ian? Ian Nani? Ian Mugire? Ian, do you know you can nyangani your talent because of you thank you for it? Ian, ako inje? Please, Mama Bruce, check Ian on behalf of Mutoto Wachata. We want these children to be mentored. To be mentored. When we are dead, if Jesus Christ does not come soon, then we have professionals in our church. Wana asifiwe? Na musiwa na wivu wa watoto wa mama wale wengine. Fura yeni, bona asifiwe. These are our children. Tuna fura itu kieta hospitali, Paul does not only teach his three days parents. He treats every parent. I'm so happy when I see your sorrow. I saw somebody was giving a testimony how you assisted in hospital. God bless you for that. Now I'm praying. Oh, Ukwapo. Somebody give a testimony of how you assisted in hospital. God bless you, Osoro. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bow before your holy presence this afternoon with heart full of thanksgiving. I want to thank you for this young Esther, so Jehovah King. They have dreams as children. My Father, my God, you are the one who gives knowledge, you give wisdom, you give skills. My prayer this afternoon is, whatever they are desiring in Jesus' name, may you help them to accomplish that. We also have other children who have desires, but they are not standing here, O Jehovah. Have mercy upon them, O Lord, and also may you assist them in school. We have told us that those who trust in you will never be tails, but you will always be head. May our children and our grandchildren be hands, O oh Jehovah, in your name. Above everything else, when you come in your glory, may you remember them in your kingdom. That is our desire, all of us. And that is what has brought us here in this sanctuary. It is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And before you sit down, uh, who is the Osoro oh, had? Oh. No, okay. This time is teacher Irene, who has something for you. Okay. Now, what do you have for for him? Jafet, yes, he's the, he's the one. One thousand Kenyan shillings. Wow. Wait, wait. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to save and also give tithe. He's going to save and give tithe. How much is tithe? Hundred. Hundred. Then 100 shillings. 100 shillings, yes. Are you going to part with 100 shillings? Sounds a lot. Yes. Yes, because it's, it belongs to Jesus, isn't it? Okay. Now also, now your friend come. How much does he have? 500 Kenyan shillings. Wow. Very good. Well done, well done. So how much are you going to do with it? I'm going to save. I'm going to give up. He's going to save and give offering. God bless you, young men. Take care of that money. It is a symbol of you, what you did today, what you learned today. Thank you. Thank you so much. And finally, we have one more, Elder Mavenge. Uh, praise God, church. So I was heard during the group that is 16 to 21 years. They were to listen to the sermon and write a poem that goes along with the sermon. So I had 13 candidates, but one of my candidates did the assignment of 9 to 11. He counted the words, how many times those words, so he failed. 
but it's good he isn't. Uh, so it is always good to follow instructions. He did a good work, but he did the wrong assignment. It is always good to listen to the, the instructions. Yes, he didn't meet. Thank you, Sister Rachel. He didn't meet the expectation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'm reminded he did not meet the expectation. Yes, the CBC. Thank you. <laughs> the race was quite tough. And uh, some of them tied, but... Uh, I was forced now to look at uh, them was a poem, not a composition. And therefore, I had to look somebody who had an idea what a poem is. And at least in that poem, he has captured the seven lessons that we learned. So I had now to grade on that. Some captured the lesson, two, others, three, others, four. And someone tried to capture almost every lesson and he did put it very clearly in a, in a, in a in a poem format. So my number two, because this group you are only awarding number one and number two. So my number two was Dennis Kara. Dennis Kara. Dennis, Dennis, very excellent. I hope you came with the, somebody, your parent or perhaps your cousin. You came alone. Yeah, these guys are solo. They are of age. Okay, so number two was Dennis Kara, and then there was number one. And probably you would allow me to allow Dennis to recite his poem. Yes. Definitely, they will recite their poem. Dennis, where is the number one? Number one, who? Number one was Jeremy Nyachi Bosire. Thank you, well done, well done. So, uh, Dennis is uh, in the uh, ambassador's class and he will recite for us his poem. Uh, <laughs> I was not prepared for this, but uh, yeah. I entitled my poem as um, Like a Palm and uh, begins Like a plum that flourishes from the ground Lord, you, I, Lord, yours, I want to be bound. Your glory I have found. May I, flourish like, may I flourish, Lord, like a palm, so that I may be in your arms like a palm that I produce more people and bring them back to your arm. Like a palm, may your glory reign for as long time to come. Let a palm that may I be able to heal your people from the worldly fraud. Like a palm plants, like a palm plant your way, O oh Lord, in me, my heart. Like a palm, may I connect deep into the roots of your word. Like a palm's root, may I interconnect your people back to your heart. Like a palm, may I, may I bear fruits that, uh, that your people can take to reduce the suffering and Lord, like a palm date, may I bring sweetness through the darkness in the people's lives. Like a palm, Lord, through the storm of the world's obstacles, may I bounce back from the glory. Amen. 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 Don't go far. Don't go Thank far. Thank you. Excellent. Can you also allow Jeremy? Yes, please. The number one. Yes, please. To recite his poem and probably yes. the judges can see whether I marked well. Yes. Do you think he marked well for Dennis? <laughs> Praise God, church. Praise God once more. So my poem goes by the title, Oh Dear Believer. 
Oh dear believer, please be as a palm tree. In this world where nothing is free. And I hope with you, with, with this you will agree. Oh dear believer, be the cure to the society's suffering. Just as coconut water facilitates blood circulating and as deaths help pregnant mothers in delivering. Oh dear believer, feed others with the word. Like a coconut gives food even though it's hard. As deaths prov provide proteins to a lad. Oh dear believer, refresh others during tough times. As coconut water is refreshing in dry times. Don't be sour as limes. Oh dear believer, be a symbol of victory. As a coconut palm tree. Or even a date palm tree. Oh dear believer, know that harsh times produce sweetness. And not, all, and not always bitterness. As deaths become sweet of harshness. Oh dear believer, be interconnected with other believers. Just as palm trees take long to be bearers, because you should be among palm believers, palm tree believers. Oh dear believer, bounce back stronger after storms, as palm trees do at their homes. Please listen to my word and the Lord's word too. Thank you. Amen. 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 Don't go. We have a gift for you. And we just want to thank God for these young men. For one was a prayer that he be a date palm. And we pray that the, your prayer will be a reality in years to come. Amen. And for the other was a final urge and a final exhortation to each one of us that as believers we be those date palms for years and years to come. Amen. So I'll ask my elder who seated there and they, please come my elder and pray for, for these young men that they will not only pray for themselves to be date palm Christians, but they will also continually urge others to be date palm Christians. Thank you. Let's bow down for prayer. Our loving Father and our God who art in heaven, we want to uplift your holy name for these two young men who have dedicated themselves to understand your word today and even come up with a poem on what kind of Christian, Christians we need to be. Just like what we had, we are supposed to be palm tree believers. Lord, help us to be people of influence as Christians. Help these young men and all the members who are in this church to all of us join together and be palm tree Christians so that our Christian experience may be one that has flavor, may be one that will attract many to your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, even for today and thank you for the learning that you have done, we have had today. Bless all of us for this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And so now, uh, we'll ask Elder to Osoro to, to give the gifts. And uh, today, what gift do you have for our number one? Number one, he's going with uh, this is this is 2,000 shillings. Okay, so what will yeah, we do? Yeah, uh, 
unafanyia nini hizi elfu mbili unafanyia nini unajua unga saa hizi imepanda itafanyia nini sikuwa nimejipanga sikuwa na expect kushinda but nitaiweka tu mahali nione kitu itakuja kwa kitu eh. asante sana anaweza uh, kujipanga we say other people always think on papers so he has to go back sit and then see how he's going to do to utilize the 2000 shillings Otherwise, heko kwako. And number two. And uh, number two. This is how much? Five hundred. This is two. This is and this together it is one thousand Kenya shillings. How do you feel? Uh, well, I'm cool. and uh, second of all I didn't expect to win it uh, I wasn't supposed to come here first of all I was supposed to be in my other church Gloryland but this is also my church since my mom works around here and so uh, the poem I wrote it was I, it was inspired by the preachers too, but also something that I went through. So I like to thank God for that, for giving me that chance to express how I feel to Him, and hopefully that He can stand with me and I can stand with Him through the journey that I have. Awesome, 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 awesome. You see, the Spirit led you so that you may get some money, and you may be coming here most of the time. Yeah, so how I can pay him back at least is by giving him a tenth of what I've earned. So, and uh, the rest I'll think. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. You know, you forgot to ask the composers of songs to also compose a song so that they may get 5,000 and they may <laughs> live with it. <laughs> anyway, it's a memorable day because we're going to remember this Sabbath, the health Sabbath. Back to you. Amen, amen. Next time it's composing a song, young men. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you so much. Uh, you are awesome. Awesome. It's, it is important and good to see young men still in the church. These are our people we are handing over to, isn't it? Okay. Next is uh, we are going to go quickly into what we had promised you. Because it's a health Sabbath, we had promised that we would also talk about choking in children, in, in, in infants, small children, because it's different from what we learned in the morning. And we also said we would talk about a little bit about choking in a pregnant woman. Okay? Now, you remember where, where do you, when you're pushing, where do you push for somebody who is not pregnant? Who remembers? Shout from where you are. Just under there? Just under the ribs. Now for a pregnant woman, of course, now the ribs, the area for the ribs is being covered, but just go above, above the pregnancy and push into the ribs, push into the sternum as much as possible because it is better. The baby will not come out, I promise you baby will not come out but at least if you push hard enough you the whatever she's choking will come out and that is the most important what about for uh, a baby an infant because a baby an infant choking is easy and it tends to be common and that's one of the things that we need to keep remembering um i'll pull this chair front a little bit uh, I hope you can be able to see me from that side. And as you look at the, I'll use this bottle. I'll use this, I'll use this bottle and pretend that it is the baby, okay? And a small infant, eh? Quickly just get, sit down or get on your knee. And on the, your other knee, your other knee, place the baby head down remember head down and usually the baby sometimes the babies are not yet stable at their neck so you help hold with your
hand like that and hold so that you keep the neck up okay and supported and with your other hand at the back you give hard slaps at the back five times and you remember your placing on your knee on your leg and you bang five times one two three four five okay quickly turn the baby and remember you're still supporting with your fingers with your hand the baby and then you press on the chest bone on the chest bone and you press hard one two three four five okay and you turn the baby again on the other knee again and bang again one two three four five until whatever is choking the baby comes out turn the baby up uh, right side up quickly check is it there can you see it if you can see it just pinch it out but if you cannot see it do not do not go with your finger inside chokorain because it might go back down inside okay yeah and press again one two three four five and then the back again until you get help or until whatever is choking that baby comes out are we together so it's five on the back first with the head down supporting the neck supporting the face yes supporting the face and supporting the neck and then turn around support again the back and the neck at the middle of your bone again five and do like that until the baby comes out okay excellent so now i'll just hand over now to dr paul who will just give us a quick session and then we will call it a day and god bless you all May the Lord bless you intensely and immensely. Uh, because of time, we know we started a little late, not before the church. It is us because we wanted today to accommodate children. So in the morning, we took a bit of time. But have you noticed something? The children this morning, nobody was moving. You notice that? Children are part of church and we are very passionate about children and youth because many times we ignore them in church. So children, you did a good job today, all of you. One verse and then we shall close. The book of Psalm 105. Psalm 105, 106 and verse 15. Psalms 106 and verse 15. Start from verse 14 for context. It's talking. David is describing what happened to the children of Israel on their way from Egypt to Canaan. Verse 14, in the desert, they gave in to their craving. In the wasteland, they put God to the test. Verse 15, so he gave them what they asked for but then sent them a wasting disease. Notice, they asked, God granted their wishes. But in exchange, he allowed them to get a wasting disease. We now know that today, worldwide, the one disease that makes us waste is called cancer. Cancer is a disease that makes you waste. And David is saying, because of their insistence, God said, you want it, have it. The consequence was a wasting disease. It's very interesting. When they cried for quails, God gave them. They wanted meat, isn't it? He gave them quails. What happened to the quails? They are coming out from where? From the nose, isn't it? Eh? The Bible says. And he says, he granted them. I want you to listen to this and follow me. Everybody at the end of the age who will get to heaven, God will always tell them, let your will be done. Let me repeat this. All of us, to get to heaven, 
will say, God, let your will be done. But God will also tell every one of us, let your will be done. Those they have chosen to ignore God. Heaven is not for them. God knows they will never be happy. So he tells them, let your will be done. So as they go to burn in hell, God has told them, let your will be done. Similarly, those who get to heaven, God is telling them, you love me so much, heaven was everything you are after because of your love relationship with me. You did not see how you would live without me. Let your will be done. Come into the joy of your father. So at the end of the day, those who are lost, let your will be done. Those who are saved in God's kingdom, let your will be done. God is interested in having us make good choices. And so these people here, they chose what God had not given them. He gave them manna. They don't want manna. They want flesh, he says. Let your will be done. But there are consequences to it. There are consequences to allowing our will to take place rather than God's will. Let me bring it to a close. I want you to note, when it comes, and there are a lot of controversies in churches about diet. We actually wanted to talk about diet this afternoon, but let me leave it and say it this way to you. Those who know what God intends for us to eat proper, and we choose to eat what is improper, God says to you, let your will be done. Those who know what God says is good for us, and we follow what he wants for us, he says, let your will be done. In other words, this is what I'm saying. You may have two people, let's say two people here, to one, both of them, both of them eat pork. Both of them. To one who does not know any better, God acknowledges he doesn't know. But to those who know, he says, let your will be done. Are we together? Two people may drink alcohol. One of them doesn't know anything wrong. But some of us here know that it is improper for us to take alcohol because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? So for those who don't know, God overlooks. For those who know, let your will be done. The consequences both in this world follow us sometimes the next one. Same thing with diet. Please take note. Some of us know that initially God intended for us what from the Garden of Eden, what we should eat, isn't it? We want us to eat vegetables and fruits and grains, legumes. And because I know that's what God intends for me, and I follow it, God says, your will be done. But somebody else who knows, but chooses to eat otherwise, you're making a choice. Let it will be done. But there are consequences. So for these people, the Bible says, he sent them a wasting disease, a consequence of the choice that they made. So this is my plea to you. Allow yourself in everything you do to make choices in health consistent with the knowledge that you have, both from God's word and from the spirit of prophecy. It's interesting. This COVID is now, huh? Let me tell you a few interesting studies that have been coming out during COVID. Did you know, during this COVID season, studies are showing those who smoke or drink have twice a chance more of getting COVID even after getting the vaccine and booster shots. Let me repeat. Those who choose to drink alcohol a lot and smoke even after getting COVID vaccine, two of them and a booster increase their chances by two times of getting COVID again. Are you, are you hearing what I'm trying to say? They have made a choice. Now, this is pure science now. Let me tell you another study, interesting study, saying this. Those who exercise 
have lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, and put away anything that is of flesh, any meat, have a lower chance of getting COVID that we call long COVID. In other words, you may have COVID and you recover, you test negative. But if you've been vegetarian, for instance, you don't get what you call long COVID. What is long COVID? The virus is gone, but it leaves people with permanent disabilities. We don't know how long the disabilities will last because, you know, it's such a new disease. Some are kidneys, others are heart, others are emotional. For instance, one study says you get up to 13 times more of getting clinical depression. Meaning, whatever your diet was before, your exercise, your health habits, they determine whether you get long COVID or what you call post-COVID syndrome or not. Why so? Because we're the variant. Now we're going through Kenya, the sixth wave. Sixth wave, eh? And we, you hear people talking of Omicron. You've heard of Omicron, eh? Now we're dealing with what we call Omicron BA4 and BA5. Now, what is this Omicron? And they all coronaviruses. Let me explain to you. When COVID comes to you and it lands that it's killing you, the, disease, the virus does not want to die. Because if it gets you and kills you, the virus also dies. And the virus doesn't want to die. So what does it do? It, it mutates. It changes itself. And sometimes the changes are so much, it becomes a variant. Now let me break it down for you can understand. You all see Elder Madenge. He's slender, right? He's small, right? In body, right? And he's brown, right? And he's an African. If tomorrow you are to see Elder Madenge and suddenly he has a long hair. Long hair. Remember in the morning I told you, I was told my wife is a girlfriend, eh? 19 years old. Eh? <laughs> now, if you see Elder Madenge with very long hair, you still recognize him. That's a very small change. We call that a mutation. A very small change. But if Elder Madenge gets many changes or many mutations, suddenly, when you look at him, he's big and tall. And he's bald head. And he's Chinese. And he's a woman. Big, tall, woman, Chinese. Would you recognize Elder Madenge? No, you would not. That's a variant. In other words, there are too many changes that the end product is not recognizable from what it was before. So COVID, when it, the coronaviruses came, they say small, small changes, small changes, small changes. Alpha, delta, beta. You remember all those. Now, it has gone on into so many changes, become what an Omicron. And those changes are so much that you cannot recognize it from the original COVID. Have I confused you? When you look at Madenge now, tall, big, he's a woman. No, he's a man. Eh? I'm just, this is an example I'm giving. Eh? Don't think he's a woman. Eh? And he's not Chinese. That's what COVID is doing. As a result of that, even if you have the vaccine, I'm telling you, your lifestyle determines what happens with the current wave. That's why a week ago, Dr. Moth, the Director General of Health, in the Ministry of Health, made it very clear, says, Kenyans, please imagine you eat well and exercise. Why is he saying so? Because we are now dealing with a different animal, Omicron. Are we together? And for what we now have, we now know. Tobacco, alcohol, exercise, and if possible, a vegetarian-based diet. That's what will help us. Isn't that interesting about COVID? And yet, in Psalm 105, he gave them a wasting disease. He told them, you will be done. I pray to God that each of us will just ask ourselves and say, God, Allow me to order my life in accordance to the light that is available to me now. For each of us, ask yourself 
and order your life in accordance to God's will. May the Lord be with you. It was a pleasure to be with you today and spend a whole day. I know these horrible preachers who, who took so long. Somebody says that, you know, the, there's a beatitude, you know, that says, blessed are the preachers who preach short sermons, for they, they shall surely be invited again. Now, we have forfeited that beatitude today with these preachers who, who, who preach and take long. But we have been privileged to have you. You are a wonderful church. And may God be with you in Jesus' name. Amen. I can see some hands. Daktari, please tap. And uh, someone on to ask a question. Can I allow to that? Thank you. Daktari says I can allow. Please pass the mic to Elder Richard. Daktari, you touched on a very sensitive issue about the COVID-19. And from where I sit, as a common man, a lay person as far as, far as um, medical issues are concerned. But from our point of view, the way this COVID-19 is, um, is presented by the physician, we get worried. But on the ground, you find that 10 people get the disease. Um, all, of, all of them, or nine out of 10, or nine out of 10 get well. I think we don't have the same information uh, the way you have you, the medics. But the reason why you find that there's a lot of relaxation is that possibly we don't understand this virus. The way you're explaining it, surely, um, we, we, we are feeling. But what is this, uh, what is this uh, COVID-19 bearing in mind that uh, Nine, 10 are getting it and then 9 are, uh, are getting well is it as dangerous as dreadful as you are as you may may are presenting it that's a question Dr. Osoro could you synthesize the question for me just synthesize it to me uh, he's saying that the way you have presented it, it has uh, brought a little bit of fear. So he wants to know what is exactly COVID-19 and how does it present itself. Is it that way? Let me speak a little bit louder. This is what I'm saying. Eh? Do you understand me now? Do you hear me? I'm saying that the way you, the medics, are presenting the COVID-19, it is as if it, it's so dangerous that it can, it can kill everybody. And, and what we see on the ground is that 10 people get the disease, but nine, nine of them get well, and possibly one of them dies. Therefore, my, my quick question is, eh, is it as dangerous as you are presenting it Bearing in mind that so many people are getting, are getting healed and getting well. Dr. Soro, I'll throw the question to you. Have you seen a COVID patient? Yes. Tell us. Uh, the presentation? When you've seen a COVID patient, have you seen anybody who is very seriously sick? I've seen very seriously sick. I've seen those also who came with it but not seriously sick so both cases I've seen but uh, for the people who are not seriously sick most of the remedies that have been given uh, it's just the normal remedies and then we have told them to go back home but those who have been seriously sick most cases we have taken them to ICU and majorly we have intubated them. Uh, when I talk of intubation, I talk of 
we have helped them to breathe using a ventilator so the way the presentation all each and everyone comes differently thank you i'll ask dr mary if she has seen any patients with covid yes we have seen patients with covid yes there are for many it is not a very okay let's put it this way there is um last time last year this time we had the variant and he explained about variants and mutants and we had the variant called delta it was one variant that was causing a lot of sickness and a lot of deaths in one month um, we were there we were in ICU having people who are very very sick trying to breathe and they cannot breathe they breathe in but the oxygen is not going in somehow it coats the lining in the in the lung and you don't get exchange of gases you don't get the oxygen going in and you get the carbon dioxide staying in the body so my auntie died our brother-in-law died our two uncles his uncle and auntie died my uncle and auntie died very many people and those are just the ones we know there are many others this time omicron is not as deadly out of a hundred people you'll have one person die 1.7 people die that's about maybe let's say two people die but right now omicron is not as deadly as the delta let's also say this that we do not know whom among us if we get covid will get very sick and end up in hospital and end up in ICU majority you'll be able to take care of it at home isolate yourself do the things that we teach about how to breathe breathing exercises um, exercise, how to what to eat and so on and so forth so we have a range the question is when COVID hits you as a person Will it make you end up in ICU and dead? Or will it make you be in the home front and easily get, get over it and get cured? Do you know where you will land? And hence, that's why we all say we all need to be careful because we don't, I cannot predict that if I get COVID, me, I will be okay. So that's why we say, let's all be careful. You've heard from two, let me add mine. I've had 1,200 patients with COVID that I've treated with many deaths. Three of the deaths were my very close medical doctor friends. Very sad. Because guess what? Osoro talked of a ventilator. When you get COVID, let me tell you what happens. It goes through the nose down to the windpipe to the lungs if you had a vaccine the vaccine stops the virus from going through the nose the cells eh? it stops it there and if it goes down it's not very serious if you have not had a vaccine it's even worse because then you can't breathe it's like going into a swimming pool and you cannot breathe that's what happens eh? every single patient i have who has died from covid when they are dying, they are begging for the vaccine. And at that point, it's too late. Once you're sick, you can't get the vaccine. And they are begging, I can't breathe, doctor, help me. And guess what? If you go on that ventilator, that machine, the majority of them don't leave that machine. They end up dying. Let me, this week, this week, he's a pastor. The whole family got the vaccine. He kept saying, those who take the vaccine have no faith. We have faith in God. We have the spirit of prophecy. And God will keep away, will keep away the virus from a believer. I tried to tell him, 
is the same thing as saying, God will keep me away from having a car accident. Because you may be a very good driver, isn't it? And one day you meet a drunkard driving, isn't it? Eh? They knock you and kill you. You are very careful. We live in a world of sin. He kept thinking, saying, lack of faith. He got COVID this week. And he died. I want you to know, until you see what we see, or you have a family member, that's when you know. I have another one. We have another one with they said, I want to take my children to go and see their grand, you know, their grand um, parents in Kisi. We said, no, don't go. This is the wrong time. Don't take the children to see their grand parents because the children have better immunity than adults, by the way. And the older you are, the, the, the lower the immunity. So don't take them. Wait until things settle. No, no, no. It's holiday, April. Let me take them. Took the children took the children to see the grandparents. Had a very good weekend. Sabbath finished. Sunday came back to Nairobi. And guess what? A week later, the grandfather fell ill and died. The grandmother is in ICU. We're trying to find out where did they get it from? The children, one in standard three, was tested positive. So the child left Nairobi, took COVID to the grandparents, Kill the grandfather and the grandmother is fighting for her life in ICU. And the child who gave the COVID doesn't even know. Now this is what happens. And as you can see, my cousin does not want these microphones. It can be a very big risk. Let me tell you. Let's say I am vac I'm not vaccinated. I am vaccinated. But assume I'm not vaccinated and Elder Madenge is vaccinated. Okay? I'm not his for the sake of this discussion. I talk with him, no mask, no problem, because I know him. He doesn't know it, I get sick and I die. The person who gave me that virus is actually Madenge. But because Brother Madenge was vaccinated, he didn't even know it. He gave it to me and I'm not vaccinated. I get it and I die. The person who has killed me doesn't even know he killed me. This is why this enemy is such a bad enemy. And I want you to know, it is not just real. It is important to take precaution. Because, guess what? What about, why should we take the vaccine? You know, all kinds of theories. Let me tell you about that. The vaccine is the same thing like you take your children. When your child is born, do you, take, do you give them polio vaccine? Do you give them tuberculosis vaccine? Do you give them? Do you give them for small, I mean, measles? It's the same vaccines. That's how the vaccines do. They work on prevention. And so, unless you have a problem with vaccines as a whole, did you know that Ellen White actually got the smallpox vaccine and promoted it? Did you know that? If COVID had been then, he would have said she would have gotten it as well. Let me also say this to us. What has COVID taught us as doctors? Number one, COVID has taught us that sickness is not a respecter of persons. Number two, COVID has taught us God is showing the whole world that God can bring the world to its knees. One day, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And God is showing us. Do you know why the vaccines have been such a big issue? When HIV comes, ah, HIV is in Africa. Ebola, ah, Africa. Chikungunya, ah, Africa. Guess what? So nobody cares very much. But with COVID, people are dying everywhere, isn't it? Do you know how many Americans have died? One million. One million have died. So, suddenly, it is not a Chinese, an African, a Japanese. It's a whole world. Are we together? In other words, nowhere is safe. And God is telling us one day, let me tell you one day, when the winds of strife are released, just before and after the Sunday law is done, there will be nowhere to hide 
Those who have the mark on their forehead will receive the goodies of this world and deny those who have the seal of God on their foreheads. And those who have the seal of God will run back and forth. But God has promised he'll take care of us. Our bread will be sure. We don't have to be scared of the time of trouble. God will take care of us. And one day, we are told, one day, we see a small cloud the size of a hand rising up, becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. And a God would have come to take us home. I long for that day. When he'll say to us, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your father that was prepared from the foundations of the world. God is teaching us he's about to close the rivers of history. And as he does so, COVID, I'm not saying COVID is one that will bring it, but COVID, God is giving a small window to show how the whole world can close down. COVID closed down. We had lockdown in Kenya, isn't it? Things are abnormal. To this day, we've not quite gone where we ought to be. God is showing us, don't play with me. Whether you believe in me or not, one day, upende, usipende, nitakuja, kuchukua, watoto wangu, niwepeleke nyumbani. God is showing us. And those of us who know the Lord, when you see COVID and all these things, we protect ourselves, do everything we can. But we also know God, you are helping us. Do you know what happened in India? They were t the Hindus are taking all their gods and throwing them into the river. Breaking them. And the priests are saying, no, no, no. Those gods, if you throw those gods, calamity will come to you. And the people are saying, if these gods had taken care of me, why did my wife die of COVID? Why did my nephew die of COVID? Why did my child die of COVID? These gods don't protect me. Shower here and they are throwing them away. And now Chinese are even asking us, tell us about that God of yours. Japanese are saying, tell us about God. Do you know what? COVID, God has brought the whole world to recognize life is precious. It's a gift from him. So are there lessons for COVID? Yes. Uh, should Adventists be, see the signs of the times with COVID? Yes. Should we be afraid? No. Should we refuse vaccines? No. Should we say God's power is not strong? No. But should we know that our God is faithful? Yes. If he allows me to die, I know the next time my eyes open, I'll be where? In heaven, isn't it? Second coming. So you can tell people, if I die, if you die in Christ, heaven is yours. If he allows me to live until then, I'll tell them our God is still a good God. So God has given us an opportunity as food. Remember we talked about dates this morning. We are the food for society to provide hope and inspire hope and trust in God. Have I answered your question? Amen. Any other question? And then we, I know it's a long answer to a small question, but it's a good opportunity for us to just appreciate what God has been doing for us. Any other question before I hand over to Elder Madenge? Dr. Osoro, you want to add something? You're the health director, ministries for the, for the church. Anything you'd like to add on this issue? Uh, there's nothing I want to add. But I want to say, uh, information is power. And it's good you get it. You can uh, synthesize it at your own time. And then uh, you are the person to decide. Otherwise, my boss, I'm seeing him somewhere here. Unless he has something to add. Wants to add something? He also has... But, by the way, did you, organize for, did you organize for vaccines to be brought to Thika Central? We did not, eh? Not. Uh, I think during our meeting with the help of our elders, we're going to talk so that the guys who are coming to offer services here can come with them. I think it's a good idea. What you do in our meeting, you just say on this particular day, bring the people from, you know, from the level five or, or the, from, from the county, 
somewhere, give them a room, people can just go and get whoever wants because we know that the booster shots are helping against Omicron, BA4 and 5, which is what is sweeping us now. So you can organize it. There's nothing wrong. Nobody is forced. It's completely voluntary, isn't it? Eh? Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for giving me this opportunity. My name is Alenia Kundi George. I'm the director. It's my debut. So I wanted to add on what uh, Dr. Tala said that uh, I, I myself have nursed patients. I've been with people who, 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 who are infected. Like the Delta the variant was, was devastating. And uh, I pray that we, we might not, we should not go there because it was so bad. We lost so many people whom we know. But thank God that uh, finally we got a, a vaccine. And uh, although there was a lot of politics, you know, but vaccines are uh, the silver bullet for now. We encourage our people, let us encourage our parents at home, let us encourage everybody because us as Adventists and even Christians, we should not fear vaccines. Because at the end of the day, when kids are born, they are very young, zero days, but we allow them to be vaccinated. So, and we don't complain. They are given polio, they are given uh, PCG, they are given the, all of this vaccine. We don't say, uh, we don't complain. We, we, when we give our mothers the tetanus toxoid, and, and we don't complain. So, I will just advise our people to continue getting booster doses so that we can, we can help us so much. Especially this time, Aga, July, because of, the, like now, in Kenya it's like winter. We are approaching uh, July and the flu and the COVID. Many times, when the uh, climate, the, it is, when it is cold, that's the time we are vulnerable. Let us eat well, let us exercise, and uh, get booster doses. Thank you so much for the information. This week, before you say, this week, I was doing a, a webinar on, on COVID. And when the question starting came, somebody said, we hear that the COVID vaccine is the mark of the beast. So I asked the person, this is just a public forum, what is the mark of the beast? That is that teaching of those funny SDAs. Those funny, okay, they don't know I'm one, eh? Those funny SDAs. Ask him, what do those funny SDAs say? No, they keep talking about the mark of the beast is something, a chip that will be put on the forehead of people, and that's what the vaccine does, goes to the forehead, and so what SDAs teach, this is what the mark of the beast is. Can you imagine? At least one thing, somebody knows there's a mark of the beast. <laughs> Isn't it? They know. Okay, the, their interpretation is wrong. Their explanation wrong but at least they know there's something called what the mark of the beast so it gave me opportunity to tell them what the mark of the beast is so let's use every opportunity to explain to people we are the food for our society remember we talked about in the morning we're the food for society dr sorry let say add something go ahead i want just to add something you talked about when uh, patient are taken to icu it is rarely that they'll move out in this thicker region, there is one of the patients who, I'll not mention the hospital, who was admitted somewhere. And because he knows whom he knows, there's a drug that we needed. And uh, because it's only found in Aga Khan, nowhere again, they had to call because they know who says. And that drug was brought. And when it was brought, we thought it could work, but nevertheless, it never worked. The second one is also uh, somebody who is so strong in Kenya, and he is uh, those big wigs that we know. For him, he imported the ventilator, he imported the nurses, he imported the doctors just to come and treat him. But at the end of the story, he also never made it. So all this thing happens. Not that uh, we are here to give uh, like fear on you guys. But these are what is happening on the ground. Thank you.
Please remember, it is not just death. I talked of long COVID. Long COVID means the virus is gone, but you are left with complications. You understand? Eh? In the body. And those complications are permanent, we think. So there are people, they have recovered, but they're going to have lifelong disability after having gotten COVID. That's why our healthy lifestyle is so important to protect against that long COVID. Number two, don't forget, not everybody is going to die. That's true. But at the same time, not everybody dies from car accidents, isn't it? Not everybody dies from malaria, isn't it? But some will die. The issue is simple. If there is something I can do to prevent and I do not do, God says, let your will be done. But when I love him, I fall in love with Jesus, I'm excited about him, and I do everything that he wants me to do, God also says to you, let your will be done. And I pray for all of us to say, God, let your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name.